There he is. I would like to propose if you read Isaiah 1, it's talking to you guys. Isaiah 1, the first chapter of Isaiah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Like, this is a Christian concert for right. all Christians. Right, right. So, me too. Why? Well, like, I'm a believer and right. I. Me too. Like, abortion yeah. is abhorrent. Right. So I guess why are you here where you're probably talking to, you're singing to the choir. Right, I know, we hear that a lot. Well, here's, here's why. Um, most all Christians have a good moral opinion, right? And if you look at um, uh, the Old Testament for just a second, like in uh, Isaiah, the first chapter, God in Amos 5 and Jeremiah 7, God is talking to his people, okay? Judah, Israel, he's talking to his people. And he's saying things like, I hate your worship. Though your prayers be many, I will not hear them. Like, he's really mad at his people. He said, you make an enemy out of me, you know? What was going on in the land at that time? Child sacrifice. And they weren't opposing it. They weren't making it, they weren't stopping it. They just allowed it. They did all the churchy things that we do today. Sure. And it's the number one cause of death, you know? And everybody says they're pro-life. But you know what the pro-life movement does? It regulates when, where, and how you can murder kids. That's all it does. It opposes making it illegal. So what happens is all these churches give money to, um, like Texas Right to Life or, you know, every state has a Right to Life group and they give money to Republicans, right? Every single, except for one, Supreme Court Justice that voted for Roe v. Wade to keep it legal, even, and then the next one to keep it legal, were all appointed by pro-life Republican presidents. The only one that voted against it was a Democrat, and I'm a Republican, by the way. Okay, he was the only one that voted against it. So what happens is, all these pastors lull their congregants to sleep, all right? Support the pro-life movement and keep abortion legal. And what I propose is, is that we're the same people as in Isaiah or that Jeremiah was called to or Amos, you know, that we can't just go to, like there's a, there's a child sacrifice center here in town. How many Christians are gonna be there? None. But how many Christians are gonna be here to music and sing? Tons, right? Because this is awesome. This is fun, but this is secular Christianity. It does not love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. What it does is it loves the things that are fun. Like worship is fun, corporate worship is fun. We love it, like everybody loves it. You, nobody goes, except for me, what the heck are you doing singing songs about God? Nobody does that but me, right? Or maybe some of these other guys. I think your premise is wrong. They're not mutually exclusive. I think we can worship God and sing and... Well, I'm just telling you what God says. In, in like if you read the first chapter of Isaiah like everybody reads it and like yeah those people are bad <laughs> like those like Isaiah is really mad at those people you know and we look at it that way right but God says no he says first bring justice to the land like you can do it God's on our side like we have the power we can take dominion of the land easily like we have every house we have all the government everything's Republican everything's pro-life everything in our country right now and nobody's even trying to make it illegal right and, and all God is saying is like, I don't need any more songs. I don't need any more offerings, fellowship offerings. I don't need any of that. He actually says that to, to Judah, right? Because I don't need it. First, bring justice to the fatherless. And then bring your worship. Like you actually have work to do. Like, like if, you're, if your family's starving and you're like, hey, let's just, let's just go sing praises to God, but not actually do anything to feed your family, you're worse than an unbeliever. And that's what's going on in our land today. Like I'm from Texas. I came down to help here today. And in Texas, there's 13,000 kids in the foster care system waiting to be adopted. There's 23,000 in the foster care system, but there's, there's 13,000 just waiting to be adopted. There's 70,000 pastors in Texas, evangelical. I'm not talking like Mormon or Catholic. I'm talking about evangelical pastors, all right? Those kids are all gonna age out. Kids like my kids, right? Those, two of them are right there, and one of them is right across the street right there. But we adopted six out of the foster care system because I was guilty. I had a I had a six bedroom house, you know. I had a Beamer, I had a Denali, I had a, and I was and I was Christian, and my church liked me. They don't like me so much now, right? <laughs> mad at me. In fact, we sit on foot property here. Like if, I asked them, can my kids go to the bathroom? They'll arrest us. And we just take our kids to the bathroom. Like no signs or nothing. Like hey, our kids have to go to the bathroom, you know. It, it's but I'm getting sidetracked. Sure. But it is kind of mutually exclusive. Like if a woman's getting raped over there and we said, hey, well, we're gonna go to this music conference and then maybe God wants us to have like services for raped women. Like, like how can we help women that have been raped, you know? And really what we should do is go help that girl while she's getting raped and stop it, right? But, but why not 
adopt more than six kids then. Well, because you haven't, you haven't done enough based on your logic. Well, no, six is the the max state law in Texas will let me adopt. Sure. Because I, I would have got I, seven I, I, or eight. I, so again, I'm on your side. I'm I'm totally for stopping or ending murder. Right. But you can only adopt so many kids. You can only stop so. But many we could make it kids. illegal. Sure, but. But nobody, drugs are that, also illegal, and people right. will still do it. Guns are illegal. Right, in but Washington, they get punished for it, right? The the sure. magistrates, the people that God, people have put in place to punish evildoers, take care of that, right? But it's legal to murder babies. Like this one's kind of kind of young, but at 21 weeks, like that one's 21 weeks. That's totally illegal, and it could live on outside the womb. Not that an embryo shouldn't be protected just as much, because you were an embryo. Like Jesus was an embryo. Nobody should have been able to kill him, right? And and I'm not saying I I hate you guys. Like I don't I don't think you think like I hate you, right? Like I don't. I don't. And I don't hate these guys. I don't hate pastors. I don't hate the church at all. I'm part of the church, you know. But and there and not everybody has to be like a crazy guy and stand out with whole dead baby pictures out in front of. Not everybody has to do that. But the army of God's big enough that somebody should be telling and becoming representatives and becoming district heads and chairs in their state and stuff. And we should make it illegal. Like if, if we actually... Get, get it, so if, did you get one? No, but... Oh, I, come on, take one, man. What am I going to do with it? Read, read it. it. Look at it. Like I, we ha we paid it's for them. Fun. We printed them out. We, we like... Can you just look at them? <laughs> so... And, I, and I'm not I like... I am just saying. You don't need to convince me. Like, well, I do. Because it sounds like you're the typical Christian guy that's probably in some form of leadership that says, I have a good moral opinion. I'm against it. And I'm like, well, how are you against it? And he's like, okay, well, how are you against it? Like, actually, how are you against sure. so, child sacrifice? So being pro-life is different than actually supporting pro-life activity. So I agree with you. You're saying, what is the Christian doing to actually support pro-life movement? So how do we help single mothers? How do we help? Yeah, that's all good stuff, how right? Help, how do yeah. we do adoption? That's good so, stuff. So, yeah, so. But that won't help make it illegal. Sure. But you also can't legislate morality. We do it all the time. You can't murder me. You would go to jail. Well, but maybe not me because the cops here don't like me. But it doesn't stop me from doing it. Right. No, so that's it's true. It's illegal, but I could flat out murder you. But what's the Bible say? The Bible says, woe to you who make iniquitous decrees, bad laws, right? And the men at the gates will be known, godly men, because they establish justice in the land. They protect the innocent. In fact, we're called as men to hold back those that are being led to the slaughter, to defend the innocent. Don't move the child's, the orphan's cornerstone. You know what a cornerstone is in the Bible, what they talk about? It's a, um, like when the, the, the dad dies and the rich guy takes his, the, they would mark their property with stones, right? And the rich people would take that orphan's stone and move it over so he'd have more property. And the orphan couldn't defend himself because he didn't have an advocate, right? And, and God hated it. He said, don't move the cornerstone. And that's what the pro-life movement does. It says, well, at 21 weeks, you can't have an abortion. They just move that cornerstone all the way up to 21 weeks, you know? So we shouldn't do things like that. We shouldn't, as Christians, we have a mandate by God to bring justice to the orphans, to the fatherless, you know? What is true and undefiled religion in the sight of God? Take care of what isn't. In their time of need and keep oneself pure from the world, right? But we don't do that. We're good at music. And like God, actually cares about orphans like god actually i don't know if you know this but god adopted me i'm an adopted son <laughs> he cares about us you know and these kids and if you knew these kids you would see how like my kids they're they're created in the image of god but we ignore them like you probably don't even know how many orphans are legally ready to be adopted in your state but the church should know. But if you said, okay, like if you got home and you couldn't sleep at night and it just bugged you, bugged you, bugged you, bugged you, and God says adopt orphans, and you went to the foster to adopt because it doesn't cost anything to do it. They pay for everything. The kid actually gets to go to college for free. He gets free health care for the rest of his life for until he's like 21. It's all free, right? So all you have to do is like do it, right? And if you did that, you would have to take training classes with gays and lesbians. No Christians. Well, there's Christian gays and lesbians there, but they're all gays and lesbians. They're, they're not pastors. Like literally, there's 70,000 pastors in Texas. 
why can't 13,000 kids be adopted? And the reason is, is because we don't care as religious men about what God cares about. We don't hate what God hates and love what God loves. Not, not to the point where we take action. Like if you said you love your wife, if you're married, I love your wife. And I went and talked to your wife and you went, he doesn't do anything for me. He doesn't do anything. He says nice things about me to other people. But he doesn't love what I love. Like I say, hey, let's go to the opera. And you're like, no. But I love the opera. But we're not talking about opera. We're talking about orphans. And it's our responsibility. Like, look at me, man. I got gray hair. Not much of it. But the Bible talks about men when they get older and their responsibilities to the land and what they're supposed to do. And we just ignore it, man. So I'm not trying to give you a hard time. But you know what Christendom does? Christendom basically goes like this, all right? Well, we preach the gospel. And that'll change the world. But we have churches on every corner in every city. They're all over the place. In Texas, the just, whole, just, everybody's a Christian. You need to be careful because the gospel, true gospel teaching, true gospel preaching that transforms hearts through the working of the Holy Spirit right. will change the hearts of men right. even more so than a legislator. It's, it's really the only your, thing that your can hope, change the hearts of men. I agree. And I'm, not, and I'm not here to convince I agree with you otherwise. You. No, I, I'm you with you. You cannot legislate the hearts of men and you also cannot put your hope in the law of the lands, your hope ought to be in I, Christ and in Christ alone. I agree. Yeah, but I if you ask any pastor, every pastor will say America's moving away from God. The fruit of all the these churches the and pastors of, the is that... The problem with a lot of... So again, your, your, a lot of your arguments, I understand, I think they're built on some faulty logic, is that there are a lot of Christians who are not Christian. Oh, I agree. And so Probably like 90%. Are, <laughs> I agree. Texas is I agree. guilty. Joel Rampant. Osteen's yeah. church. Oh, yeah, I agree. It's not oh. a church that's not Christian. I agree. And so... Again, I think we're on the same side of the yeah. battle. I just, as a brother, want to encourage you to not put your trust in anything right. outside of Christ. Right. Because ultimately, no, 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 I don't. I don't. But when you put your, when when you have, when you when you're reborn, all right, when God's transformed you from like a selfish guy with a wakeboard boat and a Denali and a seven hundred thousand dollar house, and He transforms you, all right, and it, and you changes everything, everything, right? And but there's fruit on that. The fruit comes of that. And so we should have, like, like where I live now in Texas, all right, there's a whole, there's a ton of Chuck Swindoll down the street for me, you know, like all this stuff. They say, well, we don't get political. Well, I'm like, okay, don't get political. Can we get, adopt these kids? You know, can we make abortion illegal? Well, that's political. You know, can we save these orphans? Eh, you know, so it's like, I agree, but when you're saved, you love what God loves and you hate what God hates and you do what the Bible says. Sure. You know, like if you're truly transformed, you do what the Bible says. Now, you don't have to be the crazy guy standing out here, like I said, but you should still be bringing justice to the land. Like we have dominion, right? And we have a God that helps us. We're supposed to take dominion. Like they shouldn't put a strip club up in our neighborhood and us go, yeah, the world sucks. It's evil. No, we should oppose that. We should say, hey, we're going to talk to our councilmen. We're going to get it rezoned. How could it be by a school? You know, and we, and we actually do those things, but we because we've grown up under men who actually sanctioned abortion for. And we're talking about like John MacArthur. We're talking about guys like that, the Baptist um, guys. That when the lawyers went to him for Roe v. Wade, um, like Graham, all right, they went to him and said, "What about for the life of the mother? Abortion be okay for the life of the mother?" And they said, "Well, for the life of the mother, we'll, we won't oppose that." And they go, "What about for incest?" And they're like. Yeah, we won't oppose that either, you know. And um, murder still murder. Yeah, you're right. Percent. They were wrong. They should not have done that. So the Baptists actually had to change and rewrite their um, what they believe, because they right on there it was for the life of the mother. It used to be. They used to be okay to have slaves too, right? So that's why the Baptists split up earlier. So, but so we do repent and be obedient to the Word of God, but. You know, that's that's the only reason we're here. We're not here because we hate anybody, you know, or like... I, 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 so I appreciate you sharing your perspective as to yeah. why you're out here because, again, I, I think that you're among friendlies in a lot of ways here, so I was just curious as to why you guys chose yeah. this conference. And we've, yeah. I've been to other Christian conferences that I've seen other guys out like you out here, so... More yeah. And we're dorks, man. We're not like... Like, I really am more like Homer Simpson than Jesus Christ. I'm just saved. I'm a saved Homer Simpson, you know? So, like, you might ask me something, and I'll, I'll give you like a total dork answer, you know. But 
I try to be obedient where I can be obedient, right? In those areas I'm not obedient, God works with me and I feel guilty and I work on it and I get help and I have brothers that hold me accountable, you know, so. Cool. All right. Yeah, appreciate thanks. It, Chad. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And I'm sorry I interrupted you. My name's Todd Bullis. Scott. So. Nice hey, Scott. Hey. Thanks. I keep meeting Scots, man. That's awesome. <laughs>